Hi, Dr. Kathy again. Nice to see you. I am ready to talk about sex. Woohoo! So, you see that question? What is the most powerful and the largest sex organ? Okay, so I am one of those people that just love the brain. I'm actually what we call a sapiosexual, okay? I love the brain and what's inside, right? The brain tends to be the most powerful sex organ that we have, but the skin is the largest, all right? Externally. They say the liver is internally the largest, but the skin. So why do you think I am so big into the senses? The senses, five, are crucial to enjoy your sexual encounter, okay? So I have a few things I've put together. And we have the sexual response. Okay, so the sexual response is something that, I hope you can see that, has vasoconstriction, which is where you get a lot of congestion in the groin, right? For men and for women, you're going to get a lot of that. And you're going to see blood vessels engorge with blood, breast and genitals get aroused. Okay, so that's the first initial response when blood flow improves and increases. Then you get muscle tension. The muscles start to contract and you start getting that sensation of something's going on, right? Because you're being aroused. Then you have the cycle phases, which are excitement, plateau, orgasm, and resolution. That is your, um, the big O, okay? So when you look at the big O from a very, again, this is one of the, um, models that we use to demonstrate the orgasm, okay? So you'll find that you, as a guy, go up, plateau, and go up again, and come down pretty quickly, okay? While we women tend to take our time, slowly percolating, climbing very slowly, getting into our phase up here, where we're trying to get that orgasm, get that arousal, get that mind where it should be, and then slowly we come down over here, okay? So that is our arousal between the two of us. Slightly different, right? I think for men, it's easy for them to get up, right? You can see that here. For women, it takes a longer time. So please take note. Men, you've got to be patient. And that's why I'm saying during this phase, during this initial arousal or foreplay, you want to focus on getting those senses, the five, I'm always going to talk about those five senses, aroused, okay? Okay. So back to that question, what is the largest sex organ? And it's the skin. And what do we need for the skin? We need a brain, definitely, and we need to be able to touch. Okay, so I want to just touch on the brain for a second. Again, I've got these diagrams that I've put together pretty, you know, rapidly and quickly. But if you look here, you'll find that this is the brain. And you have the higher brain centers, and you have the hypothalamus, the pituitary amygdala, and the um, nucleus acumens, acumens. So you'll find that they're all located in the brain, the prefrontal cortex. I don't want to go into too much um, medical terminology, but you really need psychogenic stimulation. That's what I'm trying to say. And the psychogenic stimulation does awaken all the neurotransmitters and all those hormones and pheromones that go on basically because of the brain being stimulated, okay? So we need sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, and fantasies, okay? That's the brain imagination, right? And you need all that together to make this crock pot, this just beautiful medley of chemicals that will now lead to your arousal, okay? And of course we have these chemicals here. Then you'll find that with the sensory part, 
right? When you get um, touched and get aroused with external stimuli, it's going to come to the brain and start all that process going, okay? And when that process gets started, there's going to be a response and there's going to be an erotic stimulation from the brain sent down to your organs. So you've got to have that crock pot of emotions going on and um, achieve the response which is to go to, their, go to your organs and stimulate and waken up your um, genitals, getting that erection. The sacral erection going to the nerves, S1, S2, S3, and for the women you want to get exc excitation, the clitoris, vaginal lubrication, nipples, breasts, etc. are aroused, okay? So this is just a quick summary of what the brain does, okay? Now to get the brain involved, you really have to be be with someone that really wants to get the brain involved. And it's hard to do that when you are not with someone that wants to get the brain involved. So try and find someone that is involved with you in terms of wanting to arouse you. But then again, sometimes you don't have to, but this is just for those that really want to get on and have that great orgasm, okay? So over here I have, I hope you can see that, touch. Okay, so what is touch? Touch really is where you have the ability to contact, okay, another person in this case, okay. So when you're reaching out and making contact, we have these receptors that are involved. Pain receptors, thermoreceptors, mechanoreceptors, and chemoreceptors. They're all on your skin. And when you get them on your skin, you're going to get these different senses of touch, okay? So if you look, the thermoreceptors, hot and cold. So you're going to get that heat. Now, again, in sex, you're going to find that they're all sort of like intermingled. But thermoreceptors are hot and cold. Mechanoreceptors are the stroking, the pressure, stretching, the pressure, vibration, the pressure, tickle, the pressure. And you want all that at a certain pressure, which is why I put pressure, 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 question mark, because you want that particular pressure, depending on the individual, okay? Then you have the chemoreceptors, internal, chem internal chemicals and external chemicals that are produced. And those chemicals really are based on, again, the brain, the chemistry, the hormones, the hormones are all going on. And we have other things that we can produce uh, chemicals that will give us certain sensations. But there's that intermingling of the whole thing that really gives us this sexual response. And the pain receptors, of course, some of, us, some of us do like pain and some of us do not. So depending on what you want, be careful to you know, attain pain because some people will balk at that, okay? So pressure is indentation, basically, a summary of one word. How much indentation do you put on something, right? And when you do put pressure on a particular part of the body, you're going to slowly adapt to that particular area. So I call it the slowly world. It's called slowly adapting cutaneous mechanoreceptors. Okay, so that means that there's an amount of pressure you're going to put, and after a while, it sort of like doesn't have the same effect as it did initially. So there's a certain balance between how much pressure you're going to put in a particular area and for how long. So always be careful. You don't want to be there too long. You want to sort of give it a break so it doesn't get overwhelmed, okay? Um, but be mostly aware of your pressure, cold, warm, and pain. That is what we generally are aware of when we're, you know, on our everyday life and in sexual, sexual encounters. We're generally sort of using some of this, but not knowingly or not consciously. But you, as a particular man or woman, have to learn how to find those special pressure points in your partner so that you can actually give more pleasure than pain, okay? So if I had a blindfold and you can do the same thing, have a blindfold, right? And I gave you different forms of something to feel, materials doesn't matter what it is. Can you tell the difference? Could I say that this is a little bit lighter or smoother than this? Can you? So do an experiment for me. 
take your fingers and again rub them along the wall I want you to check and see whether you can feel the smoothness or the roughness of your fingertips on the wall and you can do this also get the carpet pieces which I got from the store and just see the different types of carpets that you can feel right and you're gonna try and make a practice of this where you can actually say hmm I feel that or do it this way you know what do you like right with your partner you really want to learn how to feel particular parts of the body because you're trying to get the patient or the person aroused and when you're getting that person aroused you're actually trying to achieve not only um, arousal in terms of liking it but you're trying to get the particular organ in the woman the clitoris I made this out of some rollers that I have at home and you're trying to get the particular area of the clitoris aroused and you'll find that again this is the head of the clitoris right the glands of the clitoris right there yeah, let's see there we go so you see how it comes out when it's aroused and it goes back in when it's not okay out when it's aroused and in when it's not then you have the bulbs and then you have the crux okay so this is the clitoris and then when you put this together like this you have the urethra open the urethral opening that's the urethra and the vagina which is the vaginal opening and then of course our game plan is to have ta-da this is just a rubber thing I just put together to have this go here and you want sensation but can sensation be achieved sometimes if there's no sensation here and there's no sensation here you're gonna have problems right so that's what we want to do find out and make sure that we can touch so the touching is more or less a question of how much can you feel okay so when you feel something you always want to make sure that it feels good and we've got some oils here that I have, different types of um, emu oils in here and some other oils too. If you're interested, please go to my website. We do have that for sale. But you really want to find out what you like in terms of not only um, one sense touch, but smell, etc. So if you take a little bit of this, put it here on your skin and rub it in, it can be delightful, right? It's something that I always encourage my patients to use because some of that synthetic stuff out there is not as healthy for you. While well, this is very healthy and smells delightful. So you want to understand that your sense of sensation, the sense of touch, you're touching someone and you're getting that person aroused has to be delicate and has to be appropriate in terms of not only pressure, which is indentation, remember how much do you feel, but the area of the body that you're touching. So if you're touching the clitoris, right, the clitoris you can touch the top versus the bottom, that's on the right side, top and bottom on the left side. So you want to be able to know what part of the clitoris you're touching, and then the back. Then, this is, of course is behind the lips, so you want to touch the lips when they are on the um, outside. But you have to remember that it's gentle. And your practice should be, again, finding something that you can touch and feel the difference. And learn how to feel the difference. So again, when I'm touching here, right, versus putting more pressure on it, you've got to learn how to feel the difference. Light touch more of a heavier pressure touch and even more okay even though I'm rubbing it I'm doing a little bit of stroking you want to find out is the stroking enough pressure for the person or if it's too much pressure for the person so take these and try and find a way to know the difference practice makes perfect your fingertips are going to actually tell you how much pressure to put and if you're not good at this, again, I got this at Home Depot. Just go and pick some up and find a way 
that you can learn how to touch. Okay? All right. That's it for today. I'm going to talk to you next time about your next sense. Okay? So stay tuned. Thanks for listening. Bye.